Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Come on, all across this room, can we just begin to praise the name of the Lord? I need to do a room check just to see, am I in the right place? Is this a, where the lions are roaring in this building? Okay, I think I may have found a section. I can't hear myself. Come on, I may have found a section where the lion is roaring. Come on, begin to bless the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel it deep down in your spirit. I need you to open up your mouth and begin to roar. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin to roar through you. Begin to do it. Do it for your neighbor. Do it for your neighbor. Come on, begin to shout. Oh, oh Jesus. I was... I was doing a little study, just a little study on the lion for just about two seconds. And I don't know if there's anybody in this room that understands the concept of your roar. We're not just wearing it to be cute and have it on our t-shirt. But I came up in here to take up territory. Come on, y'all ain't gonna pray with me tonight. We came in here to take up territory in the spirit. I need you to do this with me. As I was looking it up, it says that it's territorial behavior for a lion to begin to roar. When they begin to roar, they let the, war, the uh, other animals in the kingdom uh, know what's up. Basically, they tell them, I'm not no little small cat. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm a... Come on, I ain't little. Come on. I, I know you've been playing me like I was small. But the greater one lives on the inside of me. I need somebody to begin to roar. Ah, Jesus. Begin to roar. There's power on the inside of you. Come on, tell your enemy. You're going to have to back up and give me 50 feet. Ah, Jesus. Begin to... Oh, y'all ain't playing over here. Come on, let your enemy know. The one that's been messing with your mind. The one that's been messing with your chills right now. I dare you to... Out of your belly. Come on, out of your belly. The devil is a liar. You're not gonna mess with my babies. You're not gonna mess with my husband. I need the lion to tell somebody back up. Tell them to back up, back up. Ain't Lil. Just cause I'm quiet don't mean I know don't have power. No. Tell them meekness don't mean weakness. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, roaring. Roaring is a distraction. Hold the music for a second because they ain't catching it. Uh, uh, roaring is a distraction. That means when I roar, I confuse my enemy. I'm about to throw this microphone. When I open up my mouth, the enemy that's been after me that thought I was going to die like this has to pop because I got my hands up. was in a jail and they thought because they had them bound hand and foot that it was going to stop the power that was on the inside of their prayer and their praises. I need you to grab a neighbor and tell them neighbor you going to pray and I'm going to praise and we going to get up out of this jail together. Okay. You got the wrong neighbor. Somebody ought to pray. Somebody ought to praise. Yes, Jesus. Okay. Wrong neighbor. Because you still bound. Bound in your mind. Bound in your heart. 
but I dare you to praise until your neighbor get a break. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. Come on, neighbor. Come on, neighbor. I know you walked in here one way, but you ain't gonna lead the same way you came in. Yeah. I'm gonna find out who got the right neighbor. I'm gonna give y'all 30 more seconds. Give you 30 more seconds. I'ma give you 30 more seconds. Get your neighbor out of that prison. Get your neighbor out of that prison. You got the Get your neighbor out of that prison. prison. You've been bound long enough. Come on, somebody. I need you to pray. Get him out of that prison. Manifested. Somebody just got healed in your lower back. Hey. Um. Be healed. Call on the name I prayed of for you already. Who is I prayed for diabetes. Cut. Be healed. Be healed. 
schizophrenia. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Be healed. Multiple sclerosis. Be healed. Rheumatoid arthritis. Hey. We declare be, be healed. healed. I tell you to dance in advance. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you are worthy to be praised. Uh, uh, you are worthy to be praised. Be healed. moving with you I prayed for this we were at the house praying for breakthrough hey, hey, break, break through. and the Holy Ghost said send a praise break into your future hey, break to he said send a break hallelujah hey, on Tuesday break to so I can turn it on Tuesday hey, surrender to your way I trust you and I thank you in Jesus name one more time let's shout come on come on stir yourself up in your most holy faith come on begin to pray Trying to act right. Jesus, Holy Ghost. Trying not to prophesy before I prophesy. The Holy Spirit had a word for Memphis that miracles are about to manifest in Memphis. And the sign was that he was opening up heaven was the storm that came through today. Every time there is a storm, that means that which is in heaven has started to touch the earth. And I believe that tonight God's going to speak to us spirit to spirit. And he's going to give us a word that we can eat on, chew on, and be able to be changed by. Can somebody help me celebrate your pastor tonight? Your apostle. Apostle has done an amazing job. Their hospitality is immaculate. They're amazing. They operate in excellence. They have taken good care of me. And I feel like I've been home, so I'll be back to just go stay with them. I done found me a room. I believe like the Shunammite woman, they made that house for me. I'm so grateful for them, for their life, and then kept me celebrate the woman of God that preached us into repentance last night. Prophetess way. Wait. 
I said, well, God, I give you another yes. But after I repent 10 times over there, y'all was watching me and I just wanted to buckle my knees and fall out. But it's, I'm grateful for women of God who are still standing on the faith, standing firm on the foundation of the word of God, amen. So one more time, help me celebrate her. She's amazing. Jesus. Now, uh, give yourselves a hand because y'all don't sweated all my hair out. Come on, go ahead, give yourself a hand. You're wrong. All of you are wrong. Got my suit sweaty and everything. It's all your fault. I immediately sweat. I just say Jesus and I'm just all wet. So just pray my strength in the Lord. We're going to preach tonight from Jeremiah chapter number 18. Grab your Bibles. Help me celebrate on your way down these amazing musicians, this powerful singer, Pastor Paula. Way to set the atmosphere. And then I have two pastors, pastors that are also my friends who serve alongside me in ministry. They're pastors themselves, but then they come to serve. Amen. And so they traveled all the way here from Starkville, Mississippi. Can y'all help me celebrate Pastor Takia and Pastor Keontae Jones? My spiritual daughter and my bestie. They prayed me through some really tough times. I'm able to stand up here and preach to you guys and prophesy to you because they've been standing in the gap. And so I'm grateful for that. Jeremiah chapter number 18. I know y'all like the word, so grab your Bibles. Y'all was eating that word last night and I was like, this is a good church. It ain't about all the hype. You're about the word, foundational truths. I'm excited. I'm excited to preach to you a truth that God has spoken to me from Jeremiah chapter number 18. And we're gonna talk to you tonight about the clay, all right? The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to what? Y'all know this, y'all go to Sunday school. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred marked in the hands of the potter so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make I need you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor you're about to put your wheel on the wheel put your wheel your w-i-l-l -L on the w-h-e-e-l okay that was good to the other readers let me tell this side you ain't find the right neighbor tell them you're about to put your w-i-l-l -L on the potter's w-h-e-e-l just a little something i want to talk for a minute i want to slow down because i've been i got to preach a couple more times this year and i need to save my little voice but i be tripping I don't know how to go from zero to zero. I go to zero to 100 and I don't know how to come back down. So I'm gonna try it with y'all. Y'all gonna let me try it out. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Thank you, man of God, thank you. Here we have in the text, a letter is being written to the clay. God told me that you all are the clay tonight. He said, tell the clay that my desire is to get the, thank you, whoever turned that up. Jesus, you kind of say my voice, thank you. He said to tell the clay tonight that my desire is to put their, for them, is for them to put their wheel on my wheel. I know that life has hit you and there are things that may have manifested that have caused you to feel as if it's up to you to determine which direction you go. But I promise you, God has a greater plan. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a greater plan. As I was looking at it, uh, God began to say that the wheel, as I defined it, wheel is defined in the Bible as the faculty of the mind that determines whether to do or not to do, whether to forbear an action or not to. It is up to us, based on our determination, to decide whether or not we will obey God or not. After hearing a message after last night, all I wanted to do was say, God, whatever your will is 
let it be done. I felt like Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane with all the pain and the stuff that had happened to him and the things that he knew that was about to happen and take place. He was able to lay his W-I-L-L down and say, not my will. The Bible talks about how he desired to end it in that moment. He was not as uh, pleasing as a lot of the preachers would like to make it seem like that moment in Gethsemane was a moment where he was like, oh yes, God, I'll do whatever you want me to. The Bible talks about how he was sweating blood, okay? He was so anxious, so nervous about the assignment. He knew what was about to happen that it caused him to sweat blood, but he yet surrendered to the will of God. There's pain in the process, but if you understand that the end result is left up to God, that God is going to cause us to come into his perfect will. Somebody say perfect will. Will can also be described as your passion or your choice. If something is the will of a person, it means that that person wants this thing to happen. Why are we talking about this tonight? Because I've seen the ways of the world. And as we heard on last night, the ways of the world are not the same. That we have all started to go towards and be swayed towards the will of Satan. His desire, according to scripture, is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's identified as the thief. But I'm grateful that God, not only when uh, Satan has an assignment, God has a will. His desire, I know that Satan's desire was to kill you, was to take you out in that last tragedy. I know that when you thought about it, you were like, oh my God, I wasn't gonna survive that. I felt like I had lost my breath. I thought I wasn't going to make it. But do you know that thank God for the grace of God that still had a plan even when Satan had his own agenda? Can you get excited about God having an assignment for your life even when Satan has an agenda? Most of us choose every day what we desire to do. That can be defined as your will. We do whatever we want to. This sometimes will be overrided if we allow it to be, to be overrided by the will of God. God is the ultimate, what, creator. He will change the will based upon his plan. I know that your desires are there, but his desires are greater. He desires that we would hear and heed. Look at somebody say, hear and heed. His desire is that we would hear and heed. His desire is that we would what? Is that not only are we hearers only, but that we would be doers as well. His desire is that we would heal and hear and heed. He has great commands. These commands don't always taste good for us, but I dare you to just believe God for the greater that God has on the other side of this trial. He understands that this particular trial is working something on the inside of you. I know that you feel like, oh my God, I'm suffering for nothing. And I don't know about you, but I know that the Bible teaches us that this uh, uh, it says that many afflictions of the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous but God delivers us out of them all so the end result of every affliction is that I win every time y'all ain't praising with me uh, that I win every time I, I began to preach a sermon about two weeks ago where I began to talk about suffering because most people when they begin to think about suffering we don't always think uh, that suffering is a good thing uh, when we think about suffering we get sad over suffering uh, because we want to run out of suffering we want God to end that season of suffering uh, but do you know that the end result of suffering is joy uh, that God's gonna bring joy out of okay uh, he's trying to work something something in you on the wheel and not only is he working something in you he's working something out of you okay y'all ain't gonna talk to me he's not only working something in you but he's gonna work something out of you that means that the moment that you wanted to cuss somebody out I'm talking to the wrong church now you're not gonna cuss them you are going to pray for them you're not gonna allow them to allow you to come to their level get on their level and cuss them out waste your words when you got a spirit man that lives on the inside of you uh, that when you began to pray uh, the greater one began to stand up on the I know, I know, I know, I know it feels crazy. And I know you want to cuss your boss out. I know you want to cuss your best friend out. I know you do, but do you realize that you're causing yourself to be demoted in the spirit? You're not giving yourself the elevation that's necessary. You're going to have to repeat that trial. Shake your neighbor and say, you're going to have to do it all over again. If you go ahead and lay down to the will of the enemy. 
Uh, I'm trying to teach here. Watch this. I, I was, I was, I was going through this trial, y'all, and all of a sudden I got sad and I was frustrated. I was frustrated with God and I was like, God, I got several adversaries, woman of God, man of God. I, I was like, I got a lot of enemies. I got a, a lot of enemies and I felt like it was a whole lot of them. And the Lord said this to me and y'all gonna catch it in the spirit. He, he told me just like this. He said, if you can name them, you fighting too low. Okay, I, I, I'm going to talk to this session. This beautiful lady with the blonde hair because we like blonde. Watch this. I, I'm going to preach to you tonight because I need you to understand and I need you to shake your neighbor and tell him you fighting too low. If you can say Sarah, Tina, Lisa, make me sick, you fighting too low. Because the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh. Y'all ain't going to preach back to me. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if you can call them by name, you done became seated in a low place. But when you began to pray, you seat yourself in a high place and you began to decree a thing over. Shake your neighbor, say you fighting too low. Because the scripture said, uh, woman of God, pastor, prophet, uh, he said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities. Uh, you don't talk about Lisa, you talk about Leviathan. Oh, Jesus. You ain't going to talk about her. You ain't going to talk about Wanda. You're going to talk about the witch that's behind her and say, I suffer a witch to live. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me tonight. You gonna deal with your demons. You gonna deal with their spirit behind them. It's not them, it's the spirit that lords over you. How you gonna give up your jurisdiction, your dominance to get on their level? Come on, you the one with the gun. You the one with the authority. You the one with the power. And you gonna give them your gun? So he told me, he said, you're fighting too low. I need you to come up to another level. Look at your neighbor and say, come on, level up, level up, level up, level up. Uh, Y'all heard it in the song. I need you to say it tonight. Level up, level up, level up. Level up. I will ascend the hill of the, I'm going to go up a level. I'm going to leave you down here on this low level. And I'm going to look at you from this place because you're over there fighting by yourself. Just swinging at air. You don't even understand that I'm really, oh God, that God has given us authority over Satan, who is a prison, the power of the air. But I have authority even over that. God gave me authority to trample upon scorpions. I'm gonna put my foot on your neck. I ain't gonna let you win this. Come on, somebody put a foot on the devil's neck. I had to check with them. They know what they're checking for. Are we straight? We straight? All right. I just want to make sure they're going to keep me calm. I'm straight. Look at your neighbor and say, level up, level up, level up, level up. Tell them I'm going to the level, the level. See, I almost missed my blessing because the Bible tells us that even in suffering, okay, I got to talk about it because we want to get out. Even in suffering, we want to get out of the will of God. But the Bible says it was good for me that I was afflicted. Oh God, it was good. Put your name right there. I know it don't feel like it, but say it was good for Cecilia. Say your name, say it was good for Cecilia that I was afflicted. That I might learn your statutes. That I might learn your ways. Now I know how to lean and lift. Oh yeah. I learned how to do what Jesus did. I know how to look at a hater and say, oh, forgive them for they know not what they do. They really don't know who I am. They don't know who he... They didn't know who Jesus was or they might not have messed with him. If they really knew who Jesus was, they would have left him alone because he was 100% God and 100% man. At any moment, he could have called down thousands of angels to begin to attack. And guess what? You can do the same thing. I ain't got no enemies. I got angels. I'm going to call my... 
you about it? Teach. Uh, my suffering, it was good for me. I, and when I was teaching it, God told me to tell the people of God. He said it was good for you because all you saw was the outward appearance. Well, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know we try to use it for tithe and offering, but, and we try to look at it for worship, but, but do you realize that, that God even used it? Come on, uh, for us, he said, man looks at the, but God looks at the what? So that means that God saw them talking about you. God saw them in the break room having a conversation about you. God saw you baking cakes for them. Oh, wait. God saw you giving them money, putting money. Okay. God saw you being a blessing to them, but he saw them being a backstabber too. So he had to remove them. So look at your neighbor and say, it was good for me. Go find you three people and tell them it was good for me. It was good for me. I wanted to let them go. I wanted to go off. I wanted to snap, but it was good for me. It was good for me. Now I got peace. Now I got peace. That's a passes all under I didn't even understand I would have this much peace I go to bed at night I ain't worried about nobody I ain't looking over my shoulder I ain't even understand I could have peace like this I could have peace like a river <sighs> thank God for my peace and you got to understand this, that even when you're going through, you got to understand that it produces something in you called prayer. It makes you pray more. I'm sorry, y'all, but it's the best tool God ever gave your girl. God gave me the ability to be able to pray, which means I began to snatch things out of the unseen into the seen. I began to pull things out of the heavens into the earth realm. Y'all ain't going to pray. He says, thy kingdom, thy will be on as it is in so I snatched stuff out of heaven uh, that I know God told me I could have. Uh, there's some gold in heaven. Uh, that means I'm going to have some abundance down here. Uh, there's healing in heaven. <sighs> but I would have kept depending on them to produce for me. And when they left, I didn't know how to leave. I didn't know how to live. But then you understood now how this peace works. Watch this. So he says, sometimes my will is for you to suffer. <laughs> we don't like that Bible. Watch this. We, we, we don't like that Bible. We want the message translation. We want it to sound good all the time. We thought when we gave Jesus our light, our hand, gave a preacher our hand and gave God our heart that everything was going to be good. But there is something about suffering that produces something in you. And watch this. He said, after you have suffered a while, then I'm going to, I told you this was his will. Because at the end of it, all he wanted to do was get you to a place of strengthening. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean nothing to nobody if you don't understand the power of having strength. That means that when you get weak, you got a place to lean on now. And for those of us that don't realize it, there's this place called grace. God gives me the ability to lean in every now and then. So he says, I want to strengthen you. Not only that, but my desire is to establish you. Do you understand that you were moving around and doing things that God didn't call you to do? You weren't stable. To establish means to make stable or to place firmly. He says, I'm about to set you in order. Watch this. He said, I'm about to make you firm. Stable means, he said, not only strengthen, but stabilize you, which means to place you firmly, to fix you, to confirm and affirm who you really are. He said, my desire is to get you to this place 
of peace. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going on somewhere, I promise you. We're going to get you on the wheel. We're almost there. He said, this part of suffering is like that of Jesus. I told you I'm sweating everywhere. We do this by Hebrews 12 and 2. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, who is the champion, I love that version, who initiates and perfects our faith because of the what? Joy that was set before him. He in the cross, okay? Uh, suffering teaches you how to endure like Jesus did. He said, I'm going to suffer for just a little while because Cecilia is coming up the bloodline. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, 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 babe, what's your name, baby girl? You with the no weapon shirt on, what's your name? Shira, say it again. Sharonda, do you understand that God knew what, that Sharonda was coming up through the bloodline, that she was going to be born, and I ain't going to ask you your age, in 1991. Sharonda was born, we're just going to say that. And he knew it, and he knew the stuff that she would deal with. So he said, and the stuff that's on the inside of Sharonda. So he endured the cross with joy because he understood that Sharonda might not be able to handle the stuff that's coming. But I'm going to take the bruises for Sharonda back. Okay, he said, I'm going to take the bruises so that I can deal with the iniquities, the inner stuff that's on the inside of her that she didn't even know was there. So he said, I'm going to take some bruises on the cross for Sharon. Y'all ain't talking to me. And if you be truthful, he took some bruises for our crazy self too. Uh, 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 Lady Jones, will you just wave your hand? My friend is a, a, a two-year survivor of cancer. Uh, Y'all... When I initially got the news, I got in tears. And I began to cry because that's my friend and I love her. And just like Jesus, when he found out that Lazarus had died, he wept. Y'all ain't gonna talk. So there's a part of us in our humanity, we begin to yield to our flesh and our emotions when things happen. But the moment I begin to pray in the spirit, I began to build myself up in my most holy faith. And she came to a service and God told me to look her in the eye and tell her, I know cancer is there, but God said, I canceled cancer. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me. See, that's why you gotta have the right kind of friends. The ones that ain't gonna have no pity party, but that's gonna have a prayer meeting. I don't need no pity party for my friends. I need somebody that's going to have a prayer meeting. That's going to pray. So I told her, looked at her, just looked at her in the face. And then not only did I tell her, I laid hands on her. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's my friend. And I ain't about to let my friend go through nothing that I don't believe God's going to deliver her from. So I began to pray. And we began to lay hands according to the scriptures that says that, that call for the elders of the church and let them lay hands. Y'all ain't praying with me. And then not only that, I was reminded of the scripture that came from Calvary uh, that says by his stripes uh, we are that's why he had to suffer he suffered for Keontae uh, he suffered so cancer would have to dry up in her body uh, so that the blood uh, that was shed on the cross uh, would be enough for her uh, and it would be enough for you too uh, can somebody shout the blood is enough the blood is enough to cancel all your sicknesses so y'all ain't praising right to cancel all your diseases somebody ought to shout the blood still works because the blood is still working. Can somebody shout the blood still works? The blood still works. He endured the cross for my girl. He endured the cross despising the shame. 
surely he's supposed to be the king of the Jews. Why won't he get himself down from there? He was, but he knew the ultimate plan. He knew that I got to suffer if I'm going to reign with him. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I got to suffer a little while. So I need somebody to look at your neighbors and neighbor. You got to suffer every now and then so that you can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I dare you to begin to praise God for suffering. God, I thank you for the things you put me through. I thank you, God, for the joy that was set before. This is how we do it. How we gonna do it? How we gonna survive it? Looking to Jesus. <laughs> Wait, looking at the champion. Come on, it said, how you gonna make it through this? Looking at the champion. How you gonna endure this next battle? Looking at the champion. I'm looking at the one with the blood stain. Come on, with the nails in his hands and his glorified body. I'ma keep looking to Jesus. No, 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 y'all. Y'all didn't think that that was all the cross was for. <laughs> he said, despising the shame. So now he is seated in the place of honor on God's throne. Uh, I'm going to have to come down here because I need y'all to understand this and I don't need y'all to be looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but he, he suffered so you could be seated. See, Satan trying to make you lose your seat. <sighs> he know when you seed it, that all you got to do is decree a thing. When you seed it, all you got to do is say something. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I know kings. The Bible says we are royal priesthood, a chosen generation. That means when you're seated like a king, all the king got to do is sit down and make decrees. And if you're broke, I dare you to just sit there and make a decree that say I'm blessed and I cannot be cursed. Come on, I need somebody to begin to take your seat. Take your seat of authority. Take your seat and say something different. I know you want to give up, but be seated, please. Look at somebody and say, be seated, please. Go ahead and take your seat. He's at the right hand of the Father, making intercession. <laughs> he knew that this seat was here. Hmm. And see, that's good. That's real good. But y'all, it's something else that come with the seat. <laughs> and I, that's what I'm striving for. I, I know we like material things, houses and cars and all of that stuff. But I like the fact that they talked about this suffering was going to produce for me a crown of righteousness. <laughs> that at the end of time that I'm going to get my crown y'all it's necessary to have your crown the old mothers used to want us to get our crown so that we could oh God so that we could have the mark so that it would say that we were going with Jesus I want my crown of righteousness I don't just want no crown of unholy I want him to say well done the good and faithful servant you endured a few things now I'm about to make you ruler I need God to say, well done. Get your neighbors, I want my seat and I want my crown. I want my seat and I want my crown. Now what girl don't want a cute crown? queen it represents royalty bring my ipad uh, come on it represents your royalty your royal position it lets you know your see your position in heaven and how god has seated you in the right place listen i'm sorry y'all there are a lot of seats i know you want to see on the board or you may want to see to um to be able to stand so that you can see a governor or be a part of a no 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 no, no. i want a seat by jesus come on i want to be in my proper place at the right time doing the right thing i don't just want to be seated anywhere i want to be seated with him this suffering and took me all the way off topic. But watch this. This wheel causes us, and I'm almost done. I got 30 more minutes so y'all can breathe. I'm just playing. I'm done. No, I really do have 30 more minutes, but I'm not going to use them all. Watch this. 
I told him that when I preach, they give me 35 minutes to preach. Y'all pray for me. I obey though, because I want to come back. Okay. Let me help a preacher. Let me help the new preachers, the new school preachers. I've been preaching. I know y'all probably think I'm 10 years old. I know I look like it. Thank you very much. Um, but I just turned 40. Brace God. Thank you. And uh, I just turned 40. But I've been preaching for 20 years. I know it looked like I just showed up, but I've been till in the grounds, in the background. I was telling your pastors that I've been doing fruit of the spirit program so that I could learn discipline, so that I could learn how to ob uh, learn obedience. Listen, because every now and then you want to go out there and say, oh, I felt the spirit, so I'm just going to keep this going. No, you need to sit down. There's order and there's honor so that you can make sure that you obey because you got to yield to the Holy Spirit. I know we feel like a buck in the shell is, oh, Holy Spirit is in the room, but you do realize that silence and order is also a function of the... He is still present if nobody's hollering. So I've been preaching a little while and I, I want to be able to come back. Right? I want to be able to come back. That's why I've been able to go back to churches because I honor them. They tell me I can't preach. That's fine. They tell me I got 15 minutes. That's fine. If they tell me I can't um, pray in tongues, I come to their church and I can't pray in tongues. You know what? I don't know how to hold it. I have the ability to hold it because I want to be honorable. I don't want nobody to miss Jesus because all they're doing is looking at me. That's why I done got me some preaching garments, y'all. I, I done went ahead and got me some preaching garments because I'm sick of clothes. I'm sick of pulling them up. I'm still sick of wringing them out. When I get out of here, I sweat them. I'm, sweat I'm sick of it because I believe that sometimes this stuff can be a distraction from the move of the Holy Spirit. So they're like, oh, your outfit cute and you can't see beyond my cute and don't see the Christ in me. I need you to be able to see the God in me. I need you to be able to see him, not me. My goal is not to make Cecilia Matthews famous, but my goal is to lift up his name so much that you want him so bad that you stay up all night trying to pray just to touch the same God that I preached about, that you want to fast, push your plate back so that you're able to touch the same Jesus that I was talking about that was on the cross. I want to preach about Jesus so hard that you say I don't want to be in this relationship with you no more because you keeping me from Jesus. Y'all ain't gonna preach back to me. Come on, I want to preach about Jesus so bad that I want people to be hungry and thirsty. Why? Because he said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be what? Feel. I don't want you empty. I want you to leave here full. I want every girl in here to be like, you know what? I want to live for Jesus. I never want every woman to be in here like, I want to live for Jesus. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to live for Jesus. I want my passion to be so strong that people, that my shadows start healing people in the, y'all ain't on time. I, I know that it's possible because it was in Acts and we are in the to be continued part of Acts. We still in the dispensation where miracles are still manifesting and people are going to walk up to other people and your shadow is going to heal them. Y'all ain't going to preach and it's not going to be just the preachers. It's going to be in the pews. The power is still in the pews but we try to strip the power from the pews and start to give it to the pulpit this is just to teach you how to do it look at your neighbor said there's power in me look at your neighbor say you said by the right girl tonight you said by the right woman tonight because there's power on the inside of me look at your neighbor said neighbor I know she's preaching but I got power too I know she's All this sweat, sick of it, just sick of it. Come on, come on, look at your neighbor and say, I got power to her. I got power to her. You don't realize it that you're sitting by a person that we, if y'all would have never known it, y'all wouldn't have known that she dealt with cancer. So if I'd have called her down here to pray for somebody that's dealing with cancer because of what has already manifested in her, God is going to begin to manifest it in you. Come on, I need somebody to know I got power out here too. You've been giving up your seat and giving it to the preacher, but God's trying to empower you because your preacher ain't going to work with you. Your preacher ain't going to daycare with you. Your preacher not going to the football games with you. Your preacher is not going, come on, to the parking lot with you. Look at your neighbors and neighbor, I got power on the inside. 
somebody ought to shout for tomorrow because tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to feel the power of the Holy Ghost and you're going to lay hands on your children and you're going to pray over your babies and the one that's been out of order is about to come into alignment. I need somebody to shout, I got power. I'm about to mess with that unruly mouth. I'm about to deal with that lying tongue. I'm about to deal with that backbiter. I'm about to pray this demon out. Some of y'all praying against people and you need to be praying against Drake and Beyonce. Come on, that's who they listening to. You up in here thinking why they fighting, they knucking and bucking. They knucking and bucking at you because you let them listen to knuck if you buck. But I dare you to teach them the power of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God. Teach them how to war in the spirit. Teach them how to pray and not knuck if you buck. mad at Johnny. You need to be mad at Beyonce. Mad at Drake. I ain't, I mean, it's your music. You do what you want to. I don't know, Pastor Tate. Y'all not to. Don't listen to it. But what I'm saying is you better watch what you put in you because what's in you gonna come up out of you. And every time you keep putting yourself in there, I'm sorry, but if you feed yourself this, it's coming out of you. So we gotta feed yourself, feed your spirit like you feed your flesh. Like you go to your Taco Bell. Y'all might not go to Taco Bell. Don't go, don't, don't, don't go to Taco Bell. Go in the morning, don't go in late at night. <laughs> you feed your flesh, feed your spirit man too. You losing battles because your little spirit is weak. You gotta give up your will for his. How many of you say I got power? All right, you got power, I see it. Most of us, I'm gone. The cross was heavy, but the penalty of sin was heavier. The cross was heavy, but the penalty of sin was heavier. He needed to go through these different places. He needed to go through Samaria because he knew that there was a woman in Samaria who had been in prostitution, basically. She had all these husbands and the one she was with Y'all know her story. Uh, if I would have just closed our eyes and raised your hand and say, do you reckon, I mean, do you, you know, kind of feel like her sometimes? I'm just saying, don't do it. Um, but her story has saved so many people because you do realize that your test turns into a testimony. <laughs> he, he had to go to Samaria. You know, let me tell you why, because he had to get the gospel to a group of people that most people didn't even want to talk to. The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, so he said, I must need go through Samaria. He had to get there, and even though this woman had an issue, God still knew that the power that was on the inside of him would change her and not her change him. So he said, I, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go through Samaria. I'm gonna go through this area because I understand the necessity to get the gospel to Samaria. What are we going to do on the south side of Memphis? The north side of Memphis or wherever you feel like the crime rate is high. Y'all, I'm sorry, I ain't never scared of nothing. There is nothing that has been created now that is still not subject to the authority of his name. Uh, I believe this, that if we take oil and go to the four corners of the gate of the city, we have authority over it and we can stop what enters and exits the gates. Come on, we're not going to just talk about it. We're going to be about it. And whatever we pray for at the gate, I believe that it cannot come. Come on, bloodshed does not have to happen with our young African-American men. Why? Because we're going to put oil over the doorposts. Y'all ain't praying with me. And we can begin to pray for our sons, y'all. I got two African-American beautiful, handsome sons. But the devil is a liar if he think he's about to touch my boys. Come on, I declare that every bullet, every arrow that has been set up against them has to miss them. Why? Because I'm putting 
out missiles in the spirit and I'm fighting and I'm warring in the spirit in my prayer life and I'm applying the blood and pleading the blood over my babies and my babies are covered because of my prayers y'all ain't praying and I believe tonight that if we pray Memphis can be the lowest crime rated city y'all ain't gotta talk they don't have to be the highest why because the last shall be first and the first shall be last I believe God can change the trajectory of this city if we pray we don't have to come subject to Satan's agenda we take over can somebody praise God for that so he said I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go and I gotta go he said, I must need to go through Samaria. Watch this. And as he went through Samaria, he met this woman. They talked. Y'all know the story. But watch this. My favorite part of the text is she became the testimony. Her, She went through a test. She dropped her water pot. We know the story. I don't have to go through it. But my favorite part is that she went to the city, the same city that was rejecting her. She went back to the same place that was trying to kill her, basically, because she came at noonday because she was afraid of the people in the city. So here it is, she comes, she shows up. Her will at that time was not the same will that God had. She ended up having to put her will on his will. And he began to work something new in her. Come on, because you gotta understand, whenever a diamond is made, hot temperatures and some pressure start making diamonds out of you and so he put a little pressure on her made her tell her story made her tell and testify and repent and she did and watch this my favorite part she goes to the city and says come see a man you talking about the one with all the men because you know her testimony at this point is very messed up which one of your men you want us to come see Y'all know y'all would have said it too. Y'all know Bebe, y'all Bebe said, come see a man. But then this is the crazy thing. When God changes you, you just blind to everything. You just hungry. You're so excited. You don't even care. Guess who she went to? The men. She went straight back to sis. <laughs> this probably didn't let the man law watch this she goes straight back to the man but the beautiful thing about this now she went back a different woman oh that didn't resonate but for five people that was up back there uh she went back with a different she came back with a different message She left with an empty heart, but she came back filled. So nothing they had in them she needed. Y'all ain't gonna talk no more. So now she left broken, but she was in the presence of God. And now she got a different ministry. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. She went straight to the men and said, come see this man. I know you done seen all the other men that I had, but this one will change your life. Y'all should have shouted because somebody in this room, your ministry is about to change. God's about to heal your heart. And the moment you get healed, you're going to be able to be a blessing now. Y'all ain't praying with me. I believe that God's about to change your heart. He's about to heal you. She got a different ministry. She's a new kind of woman now. Said, come see a man. He told me everything I ever did. <laughs> but he changed her life. And then the Bible says that many believed because the testimony of the woman. Many people begin to believe. So God takes you from being a prostitute and turns you into a preacher. Maybe I got the, I should have had an altar call when I said that because somebody just lied and didn't want to tell the truth. Y'all know God changed your whole entire life that he got you straight up out the club, brought you out of the club with liquor in your hand. Oh, I ain't talking about y'all. Let me put my mirror in my face. That was my testimony. See, y'all didn't know my story. And if I were to tell you my story, you probably would kick me out y'all church. But I was in the middle of the club when God began to show me who I was. He began to tell me, you better than that. And I need you to go ye therefore in the middle of the club yes I need you to go ye therefore and make disciples I had Ella 
I say in my hand is I tell you how old I am. Don't nobody even drink Alize no more. And if you do, you old. I had Alize in my hand and God took that out of my mouth and gave me something else to drink. Come on, I began to drink from his cup. I began to taste new wine. I no longer wanted Alize. I had the anointing now. I didn't want that old wine. I needed the new wine that he was going to give to me. So now, now I say, come see a man. Come tell. I want to tell everybody about Jesus now. Because I put my will on his will. Y'all, 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 y'all. I thought I was going to be in the, in the WNBA. That was my plan. <sighs> Do this even look like a basketball uniform? <sighs> y'all, I was tomboyish, baggy shorts. This is me every day. I would show up with a pair of Jordans. Well, not quite. My mom, you know, we feel eyes. Uh, uh, white. <laughs> Y'all laughing? Oh, okay. Oh, y'all just remember. Oh, y'all remember. And we used to wear them rugs. The rug, yeah. Duck heads. Reed shirts. Okay, maybe that was just me. Anyway, so I would show up tomboyish. I was tomboyish, pull hair to the back because I couldn't comb my own hair, praise God. Um, just look like a boy, no makeup, none of that. Do it even look like me. Can y'all see that in me? Can y'all see the tomboy me? For real. It's good. It's called the grace of God. Oh my gosh. Woo! He really will change you for real from the inside out. I, I would wear that type of stuff and y'all, I play basketball. I'm still good now. Don't play with it. I can, I can do it in heels. I still can shoot. I know y'all watching me dance in these heels like how you doing it because I got skills. Okay. All right. So I'm a point guard. I'm going to show pastor tonight, apostle tonight. I'm showing all right, I'm seeing I got a major crossover. All right, but back to the story. Y'all pay attention. Watch this. So I was in, in that, you know, in that space and I would always, you know, I would dress that way. And there were so many things about my life I had planned out. I had planned to start the WNBA. I planned to start it. That's how old I am. It hadn't started yet. I had planned to start it. But then somebody helped me and just did it for me. And then I got mad and lost all my little dreams, all my hope. I was top 12 in the state. So I was a hooper. I was good. I was in Mississippi. Top 10 in Mississippi. Okay. I'm from West Point, you know, the home of all the wins and football teams. Anyway, so I would, um, so I played ball, y'all, and then I had this dream and this plan, my will. I get up in the morning, I learn my crossover, I get up, I go before I go to school so that I could take a shower, go to school, and I would come back home. I played ball all day, all night, Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all the days. After church, I had a ball in my hand. Now I got a Bible in my hand. <laughs> I didn't know what it was going to be like because I felt like, you know, and nobody's going to listen to me. My voice is raspy. Everybody asks me, are you sick? No. I don't got sinuses. I ain't got no cold or nothing. Leave me alone. Y'all don't even understand. I be in the store. They say, are you sick? No, I'm not sick. That's why I wear eyelashes so people can stop asking me, am I sick? <laughs> See, I was going to be a comedian too, but that didn't work out either. So I just I try my jokes out on y'all. Y'all doing good. Keep laughing. Watch this. So I did all of that, y'all, for years. And I felt like that was going to be my plan, apostle and prophetess. I felt like that was going to be the plan for my life. But I had to put my wheel on his W-H-E-E-L. There's somebody in here right here confused right now. You applied for school. You're in college right now, taking a, a major that has absolutely nothing to do with your passion. It's on. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Oh, you fast. <laughs> Watch this. So I had planned to, I got 12 minutes, so y'all stick with my story, okay? So I have a plan, guys, to take this to the next level. And I went to college. I went to college for elementary education. I don't even like little kids. I like my kids. Now, let me give y'all a disclaimer. Now, I love teenagers. Give me all your teen daughters. I will take them, love on them. They'll be my favorite. Kirsten's here. She's one of my babies. She ain't no baby no more. She old and grown. Um, but she, stand up, baby, so they can see you. She was one of my babies. I'll take your children. 
And so it's your mama. Hey, mama. I took her from my mama. So, you know, I take people children. So if they come follow me, y'all just be okay with it. I'm good. I'm good ground. But I love teenagers. But little children, I don't like them. We were still praying about my anointing for them. I was in the nursery one time trying to sing the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. And all the kids bust out crying. Okay. Next song. And nothing worked for me. So I didn't like it. So I went to school for elementary education. Didn't even like little kids. So I left school with a GPA that I won't tell you because I want y'all to tell my business. I just didn't finish. Let's just go with that. I just didn't finish. <laughs> I'm serious. I still ain't like finished. But I'm smart. You is smart. Look at your name and say, you is smart. You is kind. But you ain't ugly, okay? You cute. I didn't, I didn't, I did I'm still smart. I'm real smart. I promise I am. I promise you. Y'all ain't got no fool up here, okay? So I did all of that, y'all. And I wanted to submit it. Y'all, it wasn't until I was at church one night. I didn't even know this was the plan God had for me besides when I was in the club. And I got that first tug. I was sitting up there and I was drinking and all of a sudden I looked around and I was watching everybody. Now I had on the same thing they had on, but my mind was set. Something changed in me. I looked at them and I was like, why her skirt so short? I started looking around. It was like the, 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 the scales fell off my eyes. I was like, why is he drinking that? And I took myself and I got myself in the car. Now mind y'all, this is how saved I was supposed to be. I was driving a, a Lincoln with a Jesus tag on the front backed up at the front door y'all know I was supposed to be saved it was my daddy car he had given it to me he was a pastor and so I'm up there trying to ball out I'm balling up to the club with Jesus on the front you know what I'm saying so I took my little Jesus tag self and left and went home and I never returned back to that space but that was the first tug of me just giving my will. I was like, I don't know what's happening to me. I didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. I ain't going to talk about nobody, but I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. We were taught about the Holy Spirit. We thought that it was crazy. It was a book. It was a jump. I didn't know anything about that he was a person. So revelation hadn't been brought to me yet that I actually needed an encounter with the Holy Spirit so that he could reveal to me the secrets. Listen, the Holy Spirit is more than just a book and a shout. He's your comforter calls himself counselor let him counsel you and then he begins to unveil things mysteries the Holy Spirit begins to show you mysteries all right watch this so here I am I go to church one night July 16th is my birthday if y'all just want to ever remember that um, so I just before the one next year this time just give me something watch this so I was at that I was at church that night and they started playing stand and the moment they began to play stand, something just started happening in me. Mind you, I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, so I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I went and hid, y'all. I took off running to the back of the church and hid on the last pew. I don't know why I thought I was going to run from God at church. But I was back there under that pew. And God began to speak to me. And my pastor came down out of the pulpit. He looked at me. He said, I know what that is. He said, I know what that is. And he told me to come from up under there. And I came from up under there. And he began to tell me, he said, is God calling you to preach? And I said, yes, sir. And from that place, he cultivated me to minister in the place that I'm at. 20 years old. But I had to put my passion down. I love ball. I still do. I love basketball. I had given myself to it. I had given my time, my talents to it. And I was just like hurt that I would have to give up all those years. I'm praying for somebody because you're hearing me. There's some of you in here tonight that you've got a passion, but you're not, it's not the will of God for you. And you're operating and you're doing things outside of his will that you've got to surrender to his will. Things are going to get better the moment you say yes to God for real. There are some of you, your yes tonight that we're about to pray for has absolutely nothing to do with preaching. Do y'all know that? That's okay. That when you get saved, you don't just have to go to the pulpit. You can go straight to the street corner 
and pull prostitutes off poles. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. God still wants to use us in government like Deborah. He doesn't necessarily have to have another person in his apostle is holding this down and the ministers and the pastors, but there is work to do outside of this building, outside of the four walls. It is up to us to see souls saved. Everybody doesn't have to be a worship leader. God has enough for that, but your calling is still valid. It is enough to still be a person that sweeps the floor, that cleans up this church, that does ministry in the house. Do you realize that what you do for this house, God will make happen for your house, what you pour into this house. I know you may be the mayor of the city, but if you vacuum this floor, God will be able to see you as a servant and he'll bless you just the same. Jesus was Jesus, but he took off his towel and washed his disciples' feet. He said, I'd rather get a towel over a title. He was Jesus, but he said, I'll get low so that I can lift you guys up. So I came tonight with this in mind that we got to get this wheel. Now, listen, you get on the wheel. Some of the stuff I was going to preach, it ain't came out yet. But I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. He says, I need you to take your desires. And I need you to rest them at my feet because there's more that I have in store for you. I told uh, Apostle, I have five minutes here as another piece of my testimony because it don't just stop one time. The Bible says that the clay was marred in the hand of the potter and he made it again another vessel because he saw something else in the vessel that wasn't supposed to be there. And guess what? He got it out. I was doing Mary Kay, been in Mary Kay, was in Mary Kay for like four years, making six figures, driving a pink Cadillac, my absolute favorite. I love Mary Kay, y'all. We were cute. Super cute, amazing. Like I said, making six figures, driving pink Cadillacs. The youngest pink Cadillac driver in the company. I won, earned my Cadillac the, the fastest in five months. I earned my pink Cadillac in five months. Killing the game. And the Lord said, give it up. You want me to do what now? You said, what's it, what's it, what's it, what? I really felt like I was accomplishing something. Like I had met my goal. I was at the right place. But there was something in that that he was trying to get out of me. But there was a prideful place in me that God was like, no, you thinking you the source. Okay. You thinking you making this stuff happen for you. Okay. You believe that you're making it just because you're making six figures. You feel like you provide. No, this is me. And it's been me the whole time. So watch this. God began to say to me, he told me to give it up, y'all. I gave it up in 2022. I think it was 22. Okay. Uh, I gave it up in 2022. Gave it up. And then God began to open up doors, y'all. I have preached in three other countries since then. My calendar is booked. I've preached every week, almost every other week, if not every week this year in another city or another state. Come on. Because when you obey God, God, and you put your wheel on the wheel, God will open doors. Can I prophesy to you now that this is the year for more for you? That the moment that you release the stuff that God told you to release is the moment that God's going to open up the door for more. Can somebody shout more in 24? God's going to begin to open up more doors. I declare that even the afflictions that you've seen have been there as a sign, as an indicator that there is an open door. The Bible says there is a great and effectual door wide open but there are many adversaries so there are the battles that you're facing are an indicator that the door is open I need somebody to shout my door is open God's about to open up a door of promotion for you you are about to go to your next level in your business you are about to go to your next level in your company somebody shout the door is open I need everybody on your feet say the door is open God's about to open up for more in 24 Not only is it more, but his desire is to increase your roar in 24. I started this off, I started off backwards. <laughs> I was supposed to tell y'all that your roar was going to create space for you. It's going to open up space, move people out of positions that they should, I have been feeling as your space. And when you roar, it's going to create space. It's going to begin to create space. The stuff that is yours that has your name on it, you are about to possess it. Look at somebody say, I'm about to possess it. I'm about to take possession of it. I'm about to take a hold of it. God is about to cause me to possess it. I need a hundred of you to just shout more in 24. God's about to cause me to have more in 24. I need you to 
For there are a hundred of you that the Lord began to say to me, tell them that this more, this open door, we're going to come into agreement that as you put your will on the wheel, that God is going to produce this more for you. I need you to run to this altar as we come into agreement tonight that there will be more for you. We're going to pray and prophesy and believe God for the more that is manifesting even now. I believe that this more is about to take you through the door, that thing that has held you up, that has kept you bound. I declare that tonight God's about to cause the more to manifest for you. But there is something that has to break first. I begin to ask God, I said, God, what is, how do you want to show up? Because he shows up in different persons. If he shows up at Jaira, come on, there's provision that's coming. But he said, I want to come as a breaker tonight. His desire is to come as a breaker. And he came tonight to break off all the old things that have held you back and hindered you. Things that have held you back and hindered you. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, the breaker. Can we go with the breaker? The breaker, the breaker. I need something aggressive there that gets the breaker to begin to move. I declare in the name of Jesus. Come on, as we're lifting, we're lifting our hands to God. Our minds are shifting. Our mindset is changing. We declare even now by the power of the Holy Spirit that things are beginning to shift even more. We declare in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to roll out of your spirit. Come on, begin to make room, make room, make room, make room. Make room. More, more, more. Come on, begin to lift your hands to Jesus. Break we declare that the breaker is here. We declare breakthrough is here. Let the breaker manifest himself. We decree in the name of Jesus. More. We say more.